we are absolutely honoured today to be introducing um, collector extraordinaire Rose Knox Peebles. Uh, Rose is an avid art collector, actress, model and writer. Um, she starred in the movie Tar and modelled for Vogue magazine. Uh, she brought her uh, she bought her first paintings in 1963 from Victor Musgrave in Gallery One and has been collecting work that speaks to her ever since, often buying directly from the artist. In 2015, she designed the Narrow House in Hove to showcase all the work she has collected. Built from concrete and lit with brilliant, warm, natural light that rolls straight off the sea, the many paintings and sculptures that fill her space glow. Rose has been very kind in sharing her collection of outsider art with Outside In, and we're really thrilled today to be hearing a little more about these pieces. So first off, I think it would be good to show the little video that we have about Rose. So this is a trailer um, which gives a real great introduction to uh, Rose's collection and shows the house that she has filled with artwork. So I'll share that for you now. And I write, I collect art, which has been my kind of passion since I was, I think, 21. And I've been doing it for a long time. I'm very not people. Uh, I'm 81. I have four children, six grandchildren, and I seem to be a great grandmother. I was hooked. I mean, it, was, it became a vice. I couldn't stop. So I, I collect, and I collect, and I collect, and I collect. This is an extraordinary drawing. It has some of the characteristics of other, um, with lots of circles and very detailed. I mean, I was a dozen by the colour. Yeah. I couldn't make out what it was. I think it must have been hung on a wall somewhere. Yes. But you no, know, there's something I don't know what it is that moves me to really want to buy something, to really yeah. want something. And I really wanted that. I remember Carlo bringing it in. Um, his father had driven down from London and had tied it to the top of the car and on the motorway it blown off. And it was all mangled and broken. <laughs> yeah. Somebody did a good repair. So not. well, I repaired yeah. it. So it had a big tear. So yeah. I remember at least stretching the yeah. picture for Carmen and fixing the tear. And I was so pleased. It was a full scale. I went for one of the smallest. Yeah. Scales. Well, nonetheless, I think this is a more ambitious one. Yeah. I think it's the screw, <laughs> and I think it could probably be rotten down. Yeah, I think it could be rotten down. I'm just hoping that yeah. you know, he keeps large. Yeah. These are the book, didn't it? These are the Yes, the I've, book, got, I've got a lovely yeah. book, a small, yeah. small something drawing. Yes, yes, I've got that somewhere. Give me a copy. I love yes. the helicopter character. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> They have very invented. I just often why it's it is. It is a very nice one. It's lovely when you love the work and you love the person. Yeah. It, that that which makes such a wonderful relationship. Yes, it is. So I hope you could all see that just fine. Um, I think that's a really lovely introduction to Rose. And she was there talking with Mark Steen, the director of uh, Outside In. Um, and both are here today to talk to us about the collection. Um, so I think what would be really great would be just to hand over to Rose and hear from you know the collector herself. So I think what I'll do is I'll share my screen so that you can see all the uh, images in Rose's collection, or some of the images in Rose's collection, and Rose can talk along with those. So I'll just oh, do that and hand over to you, Rose. Thank you. Think, can you I see that okay? I, can, I, can you hear me? Can yeah. you hear me? Yeah. Okay. The thing about being a collector um, 
is you can't stop. You collect and you collect. So most of the works I have here, I bought one and I thought, I must have another. And then possibly I must have another. Um, and that, that's how it goes. So um, Charlie will show some examples of my collection. And I thought about them. Right. Scotty Wilson. He's probably not the most famous, but maybe almost the most famous of the artists I have. Um, I love him because he is slightly sinister. And I've always been drawn to sinister. He also does paintings that have what he calls peace villages with swans and towers and things. But this one shows uh, very clearly the cross hatching. And some of the cross hatching in eyes, he does eyes of the cross hatched, are really, are really scary. And I bought him from Victor Musgrave. I was lucky to land on Victor Musgrave quite by accident because his gallery showed any artist. You know, he didn't worry about any kind of label. And that's where I found Scotty to start with. Okay. Right. This is another Victor Musgrave. I'm grateful to him because he was a completely one-off kind of person. Um, this is called Disintegrating Angel. And I just love the title. And Victor discovered him hanging on the railings um, in, I suppose, Hyde Park. Um, there's always been an argument about whether you had any kind of art education, you could still be one of our artists, which I think is a, is a specious argument because um, it doesn't matter what kind of education you had, you are still an artist. Right. Ha, huh, this is John Sundansky, it's a babe. Um, he's kind of, he's not Goga or Rousseau, but his babes are absolutely gorgeous. And he was a man who worked on mending roads and he used to work with a drill and he was a big man and he was sort of handsome and blonde. But then he created these most beautiful babes. Love them. Okay. Next one. Have the next one. Oh, sorry, one second. Can I have another to the next picture, please? Next one. Have the next picture, next slide. Sorry, one second. Because there's so many of them, we need to be quite quick. For some reason, when someone entered the room, it stopped. All right. Yeah, so I'll just do that again for you. Right. Okay. Okay. Yes. Now, this one, I don't know who Adam Souter is, but it was my first um, exhibition competition at Talent House, I think 2009. And I had no education really in art, um, but I so I just chose what I love, what struck me in some way. Um, this is very different from the other angel, the disintegrating angel, but nonetheless, there's something alarming about it. It's a fearsome angel. Um, but I find it telling. I love it. Okay, next one. This is Kai. Um, this is this is one in that first um, exhibition competition too. And it's a big picture, and I never found anywhere to hang it. Um, but it's fantastic. But then I learned that she did sculpture, so I went to buy a sculpture, which you can just see on the right of the picture behind behind me, and like, and. I thought, well, I'll just pick it up, take it home under my arm, and I couldn't. It's very, very heavy. It's made of a breeze block. And what looks like paint, what looks like the paint in the picture, isn't paint at all. It's very, very narrow ribbon stuck exquisitely onto this carved breeze block. I just find it amazing. Well, thanks. Aha, that's Ben. Ben is the most, I think, the most versatile. Uh, this is the chewing gum man who you've probably read about, and he goes around London crouched in a high vis jacket, um, painting pictures on chewing gum, um, and he he will take he will take um, requests. Somebody rushed out of a hairdresser and said, "Would you do one for me?" So we did a hairbrush, and then he did us. We lived opposite a pub, so he did a whole roll on the pavement of brimming um, tankards of beer. Um, 
but <laughs> I think these are wonderful, the very idea. And he has he does it on Tate Modern, the bridge, the Millennium Bridge, so you can find him there. And if you look very carefully in Tate Modern, he has hidden some chewing gum pictures in, in the gallery itself. Right. Next. <laughs> All right, this is Ben again. Um, ben is, as I say, very versatile. These are oil pastels. This is such a sad story. Um, he was, he lived near a school and he built a kind of wooden fence wall for the girls to sit on, because he noticed all these girls in their hijabs and headscarves, he thought they were perched on this wall um, like birds. So he built them one of wood. And then somebody came along one night and burnt it. And this is the, the picture of that. It's very sad. You can see this sad person on his hands and knees in the front of the picture, which is Ben, devastated that his special place for these girls to sit had been destroyed. This one is another sad Ben. I mean, he is a very happy person, but he he had a commission to build the wooden cathedral in, in the woods in Connecticut. And when he got to Kennedy Airport, he was carrying his tools, all his chisels and things, and the alarm went off. And because he's big, um, they hustled him into a cell. And that's Ben in a cell, crouched in a cell. It's really horrible, but luckily, um, Monica Kinley actually um, managed to get him out. It's awful there. Okay. Then again, then th these are these are strips. These are I think twelve strips. He was in Finland building a cathedral in the woods, and all he had to make art on were these offcuts, these long thin strips, and he only had black ink, and he he made this. And um, it's a story of his love affair with a Finnish girl, and he didn't want to come home. And I heard the other side. When the outside in people from the continent came over, um, they came here, and the woman said, Oh, that's Ben. I remember him. We kept giving him his tickets and saying, Ben, here are your tickets. Go home. And he wouldn't go home. So there we are. That's the story of, of Ben and his Finnish love affair. But he did go home eventually. Okay. Ah, Nick Linko, yes. Um, somewhere in there is the Pope. I can just see him. He's lying down on his back and his mitre and his face is sort of towards the right-hand margin. Um, Nick, I think I can tell you this story. Uh, he came um, to one of our parties and I was sitting talking to him and he, and um, I said, uh, oh, damn, I forgot my pills. Cotton, why I said that, and he said, "Well, I've forgotten mine too, and I'm a psychopath," which rather shook me. But um, he wasn't at all psychopathetic. He was he was a darling. Okay. Yes, Carlo. Now this is this is one of my favorites. This again was this first um, competition. I was amazed by it, totally amazed by all these words and the color, the color that sings. But the wonderful thing was that Carlo was also doing these diaries um, on, I suppose, a four-sized paper with pencil, tiny, tiny, tiny. And I bought the first one he did. I thought it was an extraordinary thing. It was at a show in Chichester. Um, and then years and years later, um, he announced that he was doing the 12th and it would be the last. So I begged and pleaded that I might be allowed to buy the last one, um, which I did and they're framed together. And whereas the first one has 3000 words on it, on the A4 paper, and they all mean something, they are a diary. The 12th one has 37,000 words and he can read them and he sometimes transcribes them. So I think that's amazing. Okay. Yes, now Albert Luden, he's very famous and um, I, I think probably very expensive, but I was lucky to get this. I I don't know why I love you so much. I think it's because it's also sideways on and, and they're also 
um, vulnerable. They're all look about to tip over any minute. And the person is saying, help his wife. And I don't know. No, because they're both women. They're both wearing skirts. Um, I don't quite know what's going on. But I want to catch that one before she falls because he's not going to. She's not going to. Okay, next one. Uh, this is Ekaterina. Ekaterina um, was a fabulous woman. She did, uh, for the for this first South of his show, she'd done this marvellous nude boy, quite large, um, with a very, very erect penis. And this is, she's obviously a very sexy woman. And I bought um, three of her pictures. I think two girls and a boy. There's something about her, something about them. They look a bit like a German painter called, I think, Nolde. Um, but she was a powerful woman. That's all I can say. I would, I would be scared of her. Yes, this, this, this is Genesis Khan, who I always want to call Genghis Khan, but I don't. Um, this was, I think, in the South of his show, and it just... It screams at you, it yells at you off the wall, and it was so good, I I, I had to have it. And um, I said to him, I just love the two faces at the top. And he said, yes, that is the dichotomy, which is a, a long word, it's almost too long for me. But there's something about the eyes and the mouth, great. Okay, next one. Now this, um, you can see if you... <laughs> This is, I can't remember his name, is Michael Reese or Graham Reese, they're brothers. This was, is by the same artist. Behind me here is the lovely one by him that I was given when I resigned as, as, as a trustee when I retired. I'd admired, I'd admired him so much in the, the Duke of the York Place show and I wanted to buy one and I couldn't think why he wasn't getting back to me and he wasn't getting back to me. And then I was given a lovely lunch as a goodbye and I was given I was given this picture by him. And as I said, being a collector, I wanted another one. So there's my other one. Okay. Yes, she, I don't know her name. She is Japanese and she's only 15. And I was so pleased because I was told that this was the first picture she'd ever sold. So she was very pleased. And there's something, there's something about this mad cyclist. Um, look, no hands. I think she's great. A bit scary. And this is James Gladwell, and he, he gives me the impression of being very, very gentle. These are magic mushrooms, and they're so gentle because they're all stitched, and the colours are exquisite, and the feeling of your imagination being let loose and flying with all these different mushrooms. He's heartwarming. I love this one. Okay. Yes, uh, another favourite of mine is Phil. Ah, oh, the cosmic hat. Um, I have to, I'm keeping a few paintings myself and I shall keep one by him. I can't really describe describe him. He's, he's the nicest man and he knows an incredible amount about art. And his drawings are all very, very complex, but you feel that they mean something, that everything in the picture is something that he knows well, has experienced, or somewhere where he lived. Um, and somebody from Apollo magazine came round and seeing this picture said, oh, he reminds me of Samuel Palmer, and which is a, which is a terrific thing to say because Samuel Palmer is one of the, um, is one of the most famous um, English artists of you know, some time ago now. Yeah, right? Uh, yes, Pat Mir. Uh, she's lovely. She was a very little lady and she came to tea and she wore a long velvet coat and she wore a hat and she brought me a packet of biscuits. She came to bring me these. I met her at this show in, in the cafe in, in the park and she was looking at them and I was looking at them and I said, they remind me of the sea. And she said, yes, yes, they are of the sea. And she said, I worked on the big liners on the Cunadas and I went up the Salon Lawrence freeway up school. I thought you tiny little woman how could you have worked on those huge liners but she did and those drawings are really good see how watery they are definitely the sea and puddles on the beach okay this is a big one by her I really wanted a painting by her having had those drawings 
Um, and I got this one. And what makes me so curious about artists is how versatile they are, how much they change. And this one, look at all the little dots on the black background, completely different from sort of swoops of fabric in the foreground. And the colors are out of this world heavenly. Okay. Yes, now this is the guy, Shinya Fuji. Um, this is lovely. Uh, I have two pictures by him. Partly I love them because they're so intricate and they're so beautifully drawn, but this one in particular, because of the face. I mean, who would come up with that idea of that face? So I love it for its delicacy and its exquisite drawing, and I love it because it's got this mad face at the bottom. Okay. Yeah. Sergio Sermain, he was extraordinary. He produced a, a drawing that looked like exactly like a Dura. Um, this one is rather scary. This one makes me think of, of um, octopuses or sea creatures that are about to grab me. But the drawing is just so good. The drawing is wonderful. And you look into it and you get slightly frightened and it goes deeper and deeper. And you wonder, what is this? Is this the uh, octopus's lair? Okay. Oh, yes, E. Smith. Um, I don't know anything about E. Smith. I can't remember now where I bought them, but I bought three. They're so big and, uh, in her flying machine. Um, I really don't know what to say about them, except you like something. You see something and you think, yes, that's that's for me. And so I bought the three of them. Okay. Ah, yes, Aradme. Now, Radley, I wanted since that first show, she had a very large one in the show, and it was white, and it was amazing, um, but I couldn't afford it. So I bought, subsequently, I bought smaller ones. And they, they're kind of spooky. They look a bit like skulls. But again, it's the workmanship. The workmanship attracts me as, as much as the art, but very nearly, it's part of it. It makes the art exist. You need the technique to make the art exist. Okay. Yes, this one I do love. This one she, she did for me and she did it for me and she put a rose in the hat. This one is absolutely, oh, I love it. Look, look, it's holding these little things in its lap. I think this is wonderful. It just makes you smile. Yep, okay. Next one. Yes, this is Terence Wilde. This one. You can't see it on this, but it's actually a collage. The bird is stuck on. And again, what is it that appeals to me in this? I know nothing about him at all. I think it's the detail. I think it's the idea of the bird. The bird is flying and it's flying free and the rest is all tight. It's like netting. It's kind of like imprisoning, but the bird is flying free. Okay. Kate Kate is another extremely versatile artist. Uh, the drawings. Um, I don't know what to say about this drawing, except that it's a train. And the train is going through the mountains. And you can, if you want, follow the train, but it would take you an awful long time. It's the workmanship, but it's the imagination. The imagination could conceive of this image. And then having conceived of it, she can actually do it. She can draw it and make it like that. Perfect. Okay. Haha, <laughs> Kate again. These are uh, <clears throat> the chaps, my bur anti burglar devices. The one closest to you, Jolly Admiral Bob, um, I bought. Um, the light bulb man, she actually, it's still hers actually. She's lodged it with me. She didn't have room for him. I don't know if they managed to take a photograph of the inside. Um, of the Jolly Admiral Bob, but inside, if you open his suitcase, um, there's some absolutely beautiful drawings by Kate inside and all sorts of fascinating things. But what I, I like too about the light bulb man is that he's got three fish knives on his front. But I have no idea why. But he scared our grandchildren. Yeah, Kate again, these are piano keys. And um, she gave me them. And again, it's the it's the imagination that comes, and then it's the skill, and just the idea of using piano keys to make a sculpture. I just think it's wonderful. 
It's little, but it's wonderful. Okay. Mm. Next time, I really wanted one of these. And I really wanted one that was by him because I think, um, I didn't know for the past however many years, they've had students working in his garden, um, making making them and they make them beautifully. And it's a lovely thing for them to do. But I wanted, I wanted one by him and that's him. And if you look at his eyes, what is he looking at? Is he frightened? Is he waiting? There's something about his expression and a rather alarming fact that he's carrying a some kind of a club. But anyhow, he guards, he guards that bit of the house. Okay. Ah, Rainmaker. Now this is difficult to see from this picture, but you have to, there's a little thing sticking out of the side and you wind it and that pipe that's in the middle goes round and it's full of dried peas. As it goes round, the peas drop down and they make a sound just like um, falling rain. And the wood comes from Burma. I'm not sure where the car tower comes from, if it's sitting from. Well, I don't know what the feathers are, except every so often we have to fill the feathers with uh, mothballs so they don't get bugs in them. Okay. Yes, I don't know who this is. I have this one and another very long one. It's kind of um, very, very sub -lar. It's not remotely like Lari, except that it has all these little people. I like these because they're going to work fairly cheerfully and they're being watched by a man in a bowler hat with a walking stick or an umbrella which is a kind of comment which i rather like on society and they the men actually with the tools look considerably happier than the man with the bowler hat oh, look at this business very cool okay that's a woman roses that she shows her collection so you can hear that mm -hmm. She's over 18. She's been collected since 63 when you were born. Shall I go on? Yeah, please. Thank you, sir. Um, Ian Sherman. Ian Sherman is known actually for his constructions, which are works of, I don't know, magic and incredible. But I got this because of something about it. So it's always something a birdman named Smith. I mean, I almost bought it for, for the title. And I think he's wearing one lady's shoe on one foot. But anyhow, the reason why I buy these works is never because they're by somebody famous or they're going to make money or something. They're because I just want them. So that's Ian Sherman. Love it. Okay. Yeah, this is another from the first one. Like, like that angel one. The same effect on me. I knew nothing about it. I didn't really, I could see that it's a tree, um, but that had nothing to do with it. It's something about an immediate impact on me of the image. And you need to be able to look at it for a long time. And you need to be able to look at it often. Pass this one on the stairs. Um, and if it's still there for you, if you still look at it as you pass it, then that's for you. Yes, this is, um, oh, Rachel. Um, she she does some quite extraordinary work, but then she's been brought up with galleries. Um, and she's she always worked in her, in her parents' gallery. Um, so she knows an awful lot about art and she has the way of confounding you somehow. Not sure how it is, but there's something mesmerizing about her work and you keep trying to read things into it and I keep trying to read things into this one and the other one I have what is she holding is she patient impatient she's sitting there crouched is she waiting for somebody there's something very satisfying about the colors and it's to me it's curious I want to know what this person is thinking about but I never will okay you know, Jasna. Jasna's another of my favorites. This is a happy one by Jasna. This is a book and it's very complex and you unfold it in all sorts of different ways. And I mean, you can see what it's like. I couldn't describe it in words, but it's such a change from her other works, which were the first ones I saw, which were frankly scary, but these are pure happiness. Okay. Yes, this is a little sculpture by Jasna. She does she does absolutely super ceramics. And uh, they're sort of like the paintings we just saw. 
um, they're imaginative and they are strange and they ask questions and they're just lovely to look at. They also weigh a ton, but they're marvelous. Okay. Yes, this is this is one of the jazz one of the jazz the scary ones. Um, and they're covered with writing. When I first met her, it was an exhibition she had at Palin House in, in the studio, I think. Um, and I said, I love paintings that have got words in them, because there are a lot of words in these. And they make you anxious. It's a trapped, a trapped woman, a trapped woman who thoughts are presumably the words that are written down, who are thoughts are agonized. Um there's a lot of appeal to God because just is very, very very religious woman. But I I find them as sort of a warning, a terrible warning to us not to do bad things, but to try and remain like her other paintings, free of, of guilt. Okay. Yes, this is one of my favourites of Martin Turp. I, I, as people, we have this over our bed, and people say to me, how can you possibly sleep with that over your bed? Sleep very easily, um, because it's such a wonderful painting. And I just knew nothing about it. I know nothing about him. I still know nothing about him, except he lives in the north somewhere. Um, and I just thought it was knockout. And I was told that he painted it because he was losing his sight. So he painted all these eyes. I'm so glad. I'm so glad it found a home and it'll now find another home. Because it's 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 a fantastic picture. Right, this is this is lovely, Nigel. This um he he loved he loved pretty women and outside in has a lot of pretty women working for it. So he was obviously in, in heaven with you all, and he put the number of kisses according to the degree of his affection for the woman. And this one, obviously, he, he loved a lot. And they are very beautiful. And this joins a wonderful big, big drawing by him um, with one of these lovely girls in a ball gown. So I'm glad it's going to that. OK. Yes, Danielle. This, I love this. Um, I phone. So there I am, and she says something like, um, "I used to, I used to phone to say something. Now I have to, I phone in order to, that I've said something. I can't get it right, but it's it's a very uh, sort of sharp comment on today and how people do everything on their phones and never actually meet. It's it's a political, it's a political painting, and uh, good. I, I agree with absolutely what it's saying. Okay." Yes, this is another of ones that um, I am drawn to. This, this is Valerie Potter, and, and she does these amazingly stitched things. But this one, um, I won't read it all, but the bit that I love and the bit that, that makes me say, one says, I am here and I am alive, you bastard. And I just love that. that. That's kind of my motto in life. Okay. That's it. Thank you so much for <laughs> whipping through all those images, Rose. Sorry, it was a bit mad, but I, I did the best I could. Yeah, it's just really fascinating to hear your um, your stories about the artists and your your personal take on everything, um, and obviously how much like you see in the pictures that I wouldn't necessarily have noticed. Um, obviously, you have a really personal kind of connection to each of the images and they really make you feel something where they do you ever kind of go traveling specifically to look for a particular kind of image or do you just no, happen it all kind of happenstance and serendipity on, it on what you find it's happenstance and serendipity I, I i see something maybe in an art fair or somewhere hanging on a wall in a pub or something um no it's just a serendipity hello yeah and I just wondered whether anyone had any questions for Rose. Um, if you want to sort of jump into the chat or raise your hand or share any thoughts on the images that she shared. I've, I've talked everybody into the ground. <laughs> There's a lot of images. I, I, I just wanted to say um, 
to all, to all the artists, the ones that I, I've collected and all the others who might see this, you know, in, in the future on the film or something. Um, all these labels, this, this perennial thing about labels, I just wanted to tell them that, for me, I call them artists of the heart. And that's my way of thinking of them. Lovely. Yeah. Was there... um. So I have another question. I have lots of questions. Um, was there any uh, works or styles of works that you particularly thought, you know, you'd never be interested in that, that would never appeal to you, and then you came across something that struck you particularly? I don't think so. Um, I think as a young... When you, when you first bump into the, the um, Demoiselle, that, to wherever it is, the, the Picasso, the strange Picasso with the African masks, that's always a point when you have to to do something inside your head to see its beauty and what it's doing. But when you first see it and you're used to these beautiful um, Renaissance women and, you know, all these other lovely, beautiful women in paintings, and you suddenly come across his demoiselle, um, it requires an effort because it's 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 a, it's not only a sort of spiritual thing, it's very much a, um, almost a scientific way of looking at art that he was doing this in order to change things. So I, there, there are maybe moments like that in one's life when one thinks, God, that's, that's all drips on the ground. You know, I don't think much of that. And then you look at it for a bit and you realise that it's an amazing thing and it isn't just drips on the ground um, by whatever the man's name has made drips on the ground. You know what I mean? There are times when you're challenged, when art moves on. Um, but I feel, I feel with, with, with these artists and with this art that... Um, if there is a challenge, they are willing you, willing you to accept it and to come in and to find out what it is and what they're doing and to find the beauty in what it is, even though you look at it first and think, I don't, I don't get this, you know, but um, you will get it if you look at it. And then some of it, you don't need to get it. It just hits you, hits you in the heart, which is why I think there are artists in the heart. And I've just seen there are a couple of, questions in the chat so maybe I'll jump to uh, Joanne Tiffany's question do you do you want to ask it yourself or shall I just read that out for you I'll just read that out I think so um, Joanne's just asked if um, are there any works that you wish that you owned for your collection um, that you don't have gosh masses um, the, uh, when I when I go to to the shows I look at them and I think, oh, I would love that, and I would love that. Um, but usually, and well, the Sotheby's shows, knockout, there are so many I want. Um, but I, I, I know I can't have everything, so I stick to the ones I know, and perhaps buy another. And if it's not a very expensive new person, then I, then I can buy them and, and take them in. But there's nothing... Um, I don't hanker after things. If I went to a show, if I had in front of me now a collection, then I would be able to say to you, yes, I really want that. But my imagination isn't good enough to summon up things, um, you know, that I haven't seen that I that I would want. I'm sure there are masses that I can't think of. <laughs> yeah, so it just kind of whatever strikes you in the moment. Yes, is, I think what appeals to you. Yes. Yeah. And when Matt's asked, what advice would you give to someone starting to collect? The only advice I can give is, and everybody says this, you have to buy only what you love. Don't buy something you think will become popular or, or get more value. You're living with this. It's on your wall. If you don't put it on your wall, if you put it in a safe or you put it in a cellar, then you're not a collector. You're not. You're not doing it. You're something completely different. If if you're collecting art, you have to have it around you. You have to to be in it. It has to be talking to you all the time. Otherwise, you're not a collector. Yeah. So it has to come from a, a real place of passion. Mm -hmm. Then, as you as you're feeling. Um. So. Yeah. Colin has asked, uh, what are your feelings about digital art and possibly oh, collecting yeah. digital? Yeah. Um, I don't think anything has changed 
I sometimes I have a once or twice bought something that I I don't know why I bought it. I was influenced by somebody else. This is a big mistake. Don't be influenced by somebody else. This is a different kind of art collection. If you're collecting in uh with my other field is modern British, well then you you do find out, you do research, blah blah blah, because it's important. But with this kind of art, it's a different kind of art. And um no, I would never ask anyone, I dream of asking anybody whether to buy something. It's like taking your husband to choose your clothes when you go shopping. I'd never do that. <laughs> I'd rather yeah. look and look and consciously not buy. Um, yes, because often I can't afford to buy. I mean, I look and I would love something, but I, I, I can't afford it. Um, or I go and look and there's nothing um, that has this effect on me that I that I need it that I need it in my life. Uh, so there's a question from Mark as well. Do you want to ask that or shall I read it out for you? Well, I hear him. He's muted. Oh, I mute myself. Rose, this, I, I know you probably explained to you already. Uh, uh, you know the reason why you had most of your collection of sort of artists with heart in home and then your mod brick collection in london and, and why you sort of displayed those works and collections separately um i think it just happened partly because a lot of the art i was buying that's at home is very big and there was space so that the the big oxidus and the things like that went went there um and also the house suited suited the art um it, it it's, it's for us it's comparatively bare there aren't many shelves at home uh, which is weird because in london there are masses and masses of shelves and they're covered with stuff um and and i thought that that these artists they didn't need stuff around them they, they really didn't they wanted to be clear and highly visible and lived with and which is why i love hanging things on stairs because you're always passing them and you're always seeing them. It wasn't, um, I'm just seeing what there is up here. When we're selling the house at home and then that happens, a lot of those artists, well, I've kept three or four. Um, I've kept Phil Baird, kept Carlo, um, I've kept Jasna. Um, there's some I've kept back and let you have them. And they will come up here, they will be hung here. But I mean, look, there, there's your reefs up there going very well with an Augustus John and an Orphan. So you know, I have no, um, there's no sort of other, other way. Of, I haven't separated them on purpose. And I can see Carlo has a question. Do you, do you want to ask that or shall I read it out for you? Let's see how to unmute it. My baby's asleep, so I, I thought maybe I won't talk, but actually I thought I should say hello, so hi. Hello, hello Nice to see you. Uh, my question was, over time, do you love any works less, or and, and or does your mood about a piece change? Um, let me think. I've got to think of specific things. Um, I mean, you don't have to be specific, but no. But I wonder. I don't think it does. Now you've asked me that, um, I don't think it does. Whether it's because originally, when I originally had this particular work of art, it has a different kind of meaning for me than than what we were talking about the modern British or whatever. It's a completely different thing. And um, no, I can't remember ever thinking. No, no, I don't. I take that off the wall. That doesn't interest anyone. But I think I think they grow. They go on. Mm -hmm. And uh, Amanda Lynch has a question. I can see that you've got your video off, so maybe I'll just read that one out. Um, so she says, I, I love how connected you are to each work. Um, you're a lady with many hats. Have you found that your collecting has influenced your writing or your other passions? I've always wanted um, to write to you um, for some time, and would it be okay to send a letter? No, I, I funnily enough, it hasn't. There, there is a writer, um, it's P.D. James, who writes thrillers, and in all her books there is always a painting. Uh, 
you know, we always are painting. And I, when I was reading them, I used to look out for this to appear. It would appear over some distant place, and it would be Stanley Spencer or something quite, you know, quite interesting. Um, but I didn't think I had put paintings in my my writing. I wonder why. I must start. I must try doing it as an, as an indication of personality or something. No, it's a good idea. I, I must do that. And uh, I wondered if you had any advice for artists who might be interested in having their work collected, how, how one might go about approaching an art collector um, for the first uh, time, yeah. or how to, how to meet people who might be interested in collecting yes. artwork. I mean, you want to, if you can, go, go to your local galleries, go, get on their mailing list, go to their openings, and you will see people there um, who may be we used to go to every opening, regardless of who the artist was. So I'm so curious to see everybody. And then I just went to the ones that I was interested in collecting. But you want to get out and about. In practical terms, um, please always put on the back the, the, the title, the date, the media, and your name. Because for, as a collector, um, it's absolutely infuriating if, if you don't know who it's by or, or what it, you know, uh, it, this is a very practical point, but I would urge you to do that and um, put some kind of a label on the back. So anybody who buys it knows it's you and they know where to go if they want to collect another one. But I think the main thing to do is to, is to go out and look, look at the, at the galleries, see the people there, the people who come will be collectors. Maybe not, not that particular artist, but they'll be collectors. There'll be people that are interested and get into conversation with them. Ask them how they like this. And then you can just say, like, well, I, I actually do something. Blah, blah, blah. And, and they, with you, with that, they'll say, I'd love to come and look. Look at some of your work. It's just, it's difficult if you're an artist and you're internal and you don't particularly like chatting to people. I don't particularly like chatting to people. But that's one way of doing it, just so people get used to seeing you and they know you're an artist and they'll get curious. And one sometime a gallery will say to you, um, well, I'd love to show your art. You know, I'll give you a wall or something. You, you just don't hide away. Come out. Admit to being an artist. Yeah, that's great advice and good practical advice as well in there, too. Um, so I can see Claire has her hand up. So we'll go to you next. Yeah, hello, Rose. Hello. <clears throat> it's great to see you. Thank you for for talking us to us and showing us um your collection. Um, I was really interested in what you said about having to put mothballs in the feathers in that piece of work, and it may, just made me want to ask you about the sort of work involved in maintaining a collection. Is it sort of like looking after a family or a group of people? Um, How's that been? It's quite it's quite difficult. You have to be particularly in that house because um, sunlight is the enemy of not not of oil paints but but of anything to do with watercolor like that. And things fade. I we lived in a house once. We had hung on the stairs a pencil drawing that was very lovely, and I used to walk past it every day and I didn't notice till it had actually disappeared completely. That it had disappeared completely, and that taught me. So you have to be very careful. Keep things out of sunlight. Um, Apart from that, um, various things on stairs get coffee spilt down them as somebody stumbles on the stairs carrying a cup of coffee. Uh, but they're, they're, they're pretty hardy, actually, pictures. They, they, they rough along, you know, OK. If you're, I'm, I'm not a very precious person, if you know what I mean. They, they have to live like I live, which is a bit chaotically. Thank you. That's great. Um, I wondered whether you were ever interested in buying prints limited edition prints or whether it's always originals that no it's a completely like different field um i have some prints um which which i i i love um but i don't know enough about it people could talk about the you know the hub rembrandt for instance there are so many versions of, of the single print and they all have names and i haven't a clue what they mean i i don't know anything about prints but i have Bought prints that I, that I've loved. Yes, I, I I still buy them, even though I know nothing about them. Mm. Uh, does anybody else have any other questions that they want to ask? Maybe Matt. Yeah, you've got. 
Hello, Rose. Thank you for the fantastic presentation. It was wonderful. I just wanted to ask you, I know that you're very interested in film um, and fashion. And have you ever been interested in collecting photography? No, I haven't. I, again, it's because I know nothing about it. Um, I, w I wish I did. I there's a um, If you take it, the Financial Times um, magazine, every week, they, they're fanatic about photography. Uh, they have the most amazing photographs from all around the world and everything. And I love them and I look at them. And some of them are realistic, some of them are sort of almost abstract, some of them are scary, some of them are funny. Um, but it's just, I can't enter a field. I'm too old. I can't enter a field now. I wouldn't know where to start. But I wish I did, because I think photography is a very interesting medium using light. It's fascinating. Thank you. That's brilliant. And does anyone else have any further quest final questions for Rose? Uh, thank you, Rose. Hey. Can you, hear me? you can hear me. I can hear you. Yeah. Ah, <laughs> oh, thank you, Rose. That was absolutely beautiful, stunning, because it's just a fantastic collection. Where do you keep it all? Do you live amongst this collection yourself? Just like every morning you have breakfast, it's all just around you. You live with it. I live with it. It's all around me. However, <laughs> um, and it's it's like a jigsaw. Yeah, um, everything is is hung next door to everything. It's all like 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 a jigsaw. I, I fit it in. I get something else, so I have to move things an inch or two this way or that way, just so I can squeeze this one in. I don't care. I absolutely love it. Um, I also have a plan chest. You know, one of these chests of drawers, of very wide drawers that will take, so I can, if I absolutely haven't got room for something, it, it comes out of its frame and it goes in the plan chest. And that's actually where my prints, a gentleman before was asking about prints, my prints are in the plan chest. So that's useful. But basically, I want them up on the wall where I can see them. So I will go to immense lengths of squeezing them in. And also, some are at ankle height, right down the bottom of the wall. And in the Hove house, I've got one on the ceiling. So I'd run out of space. So there's a picture up there on the ceiling. So yes, I have them around me. <laughs> do, do you live in Hove now? Where are you now? I'm in London now. Uh -huh. We have a little muse house. Um, in London I, and I don't know what you can see you can only see actually the lovely one that I was given you can't really see um, but what, what I'm looking at are three walls thick with paintings I mean really covered with them and I don't want to squeeze any more in here because it's difficult to get a hang of paintings right they've all got they've got to agree with the person on the left the person on the right and the one above them and the one below them so once you've hung them and they're, and they're not having an argument with each other, if they're happy, then you don't touch it. Otherwise, you move one and you have to move them all. So it's, it's quite Does tricky. that one help you to put it in the places you want? Sorry? Does anyone help you with the... With oh, and now I get, yes, I get someone to help me oh, bag good. nails in. I used to, when I was younger, go around bagging all the nails in myself and I... I, I I'm too old. So nowadays, um, very nice um, young man called Paul comes and, and helps me bang the nails in and also gives me advice. You know, if I can't think where to put something, he'll shift things around and find space, which is what we need to do. Oh, thank you. Bless you, Rose. Thank you. Yeah, you could. Um, I remember when I visited um, the house in Hove that all the like floor to ceiling walls were just absolutely covered in pictures and it, it kind of showed in the video there was a moment where you could open up the walls That's and there were further image. pictures behind so it really yeah. is just a complete collage yes, there's two of images two, two, yeah, there's two. always room for more it seems yes. <laughs> thank you uh did somebody else have their hand raised or were there any other questions No. Okay, well, if anyone does have any further questions, um, Rose, would you be interested in answering any more if um, we can send them I along? I don't mind answering questions if anybody has any. 
You yeah. may not give very good answers, but I'll try. <laughs> No, it's just fascinating to hear your insight. And thank you so much for sharing with us all your stories. And yeah, um, thank you everybody for joining us. And I think we'll wrap up. Thank you. Thank you.